Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the epistle of the Colossians. The very first chapter of the book, I'll be reading verses 15 through 20. Hear these words. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come and have first place in everything. For in him all fullness of God is pleased to dwell. And through him, God is pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through his blood on the cross. We often talk about God like he's our neighbor or um, a person that we can physically place in the world. But really, when we start talking about God, we start talking about the ineffable. Those who, he who is unnamed, In the Bible, that he's called I am what I am. He's not he, she, or it. God is surrounding us. Allah, all around, the unnamed, named one, the one who shows power and dignity to all human life, the one who created and surrounds all of our being, the hum of the universe. There are many ways in which people have tried to put into words what God is in their life and in the world. When you begin to read mystics, you begin to hear this kind of idea that, that God is, is beyond the words, but people struggle over and over again to try to come to some description of who God is for them and what God does in the world. Many of us have found God in myriad of different ways. Most of us have gone beyond the fact that um, Societally, we all just take God as a given. I mean, it's pretty obvious that the majority of people in the United States do not participate in any kind of religious life as far as a social event or within a congregation. Most people have have internalized their spiritual sense to the point where they say, well, I believe in, you know, God in a general sense, but I'm not really into this idea of the social factor of God, church in particular. And so we're... So people have cast themselves adrift in in a lot of ways to find God in their own particular and peculiar way, never checking it against anyone else to see if these things are unique to themselves or held in common with others. It is something that they all hold to themselves as their own personal little deity in the world, as if it's a talisman to keep them safe from everything that's going on around them, all the uncontrollable things that assail us in life, this virus being one of them, all the things that knock us off kilter as if we have our own little deity, our own little thing in the corner that we appeal to when we need to appeal to some kind of divine intervention, but in the most part, it's left there only when we need it. It's interesting, though, that, um, that when we go through life, periodically we do need to go to that corner and to find God. We need to figure out what God is doing in the world, or at least we ask that question of God. What are you doing in the world? Why am I in this position? What is my meaning of life? Where am I going from here? And too often when God answers, it becomes this kind of um, personal secret that people have. I still, you know, the, the United Church of Christ talks about God is still speaking. But really, for the most part, people don't talk about what God says to them, what God, what God is doing in their life. We've kind of lost that language. Too often it has been, it has been captured by, by those who say that God only speaks in specific ways, and if you don't use that specific language, this God language, then you definitely aren't talking about God. You're talking about your own ideas about the universe and all. But that's really not the case. Most of us hold on to at least some part of our life, a divine flash, a divine moment in which we felt God's presence in a real sense, 
and it's held up over time, even though doubts come flying in periodically and go, well, you know, really, is that real? Or was I, you know, was I just living off a good bottle of wine? You know, what, what is up with this? Am I, am I, is this real experience with divinity? Is this what really God is about? I have a couple of theories on this. I believe that if it's real divinity, real experience with God and you, you have been expanded beyond yourself. If your experience of God and you is so inward-centered that it, you can't look out, I would say that you have really not had a divine experience. In the Bible, it's, it's over and over, <clears throat> this example is given to us, you know, that the true prophet, the false prophet, the, tr- the false prophet is the one who just sa- it gives the, um, the answer that people want to hear, you know, that, that, oh, it'll all be great, we'll pat you on the hand, it'll all, it'll all work out. It's a centering in that only, that it becomes myopic, it's all about you. While the true prophet in the, in the, um, in the Bible And Jesus himself talks about the encounter with God as expansive. You begin to see God, not just in your own terms, but you begin to see God in other places. You begin to see God working in situations that are even beyond your touch. And that you become a vehicle or a vessel of God's work in the world. All of a sudden, people who you weren't related to are your brothers and sisters. All of a sudden, things that you were thought didn't concern you at all become a concern for you. All of a sudden, change that you thought was intractable, things that would never change, things that were always going to be the same, get budged a little. And you find yourself in the midst of that. Because all of a sudden, you find that the people who are wanting that change, the people who are engaged in that, are made new and have found a new voice and a new power that you didn't know existed. Maybe they didn't know exist either. The demonstrations that have been a part of our country for the last couple of weeks, I think, is one, of those, is one of those examples in which people have been touched in a unique way and to, to the fact of racism. It's not an indictment so much on, on, police, on police action, I see, as an indictment on ourselves as a society that said that we just ignored this problem and we thought that it would just take care of itself and that we didn't really need to be involved with it. So therefore, it was, you know, it was a a few bad cops that, that that, you know, confronted racism in a bad way. But really, the the real reality is, is that the society that we are a part of and have made up, have been made up of, have just kind of turned a whole blind eye to that. If we said it really doesn't exist for us, then it's really another person's problem. And to me, that's the kind of myopathy that people get on their high horse about and say, well, I didn't see God in that. When reality, that means that you were so self-centered on what you were doing that you didn't perceive that God was doing a new thing around you or at least calling you to be something different than you are. There are plenty of um, examples in history of people who've been changed in hard times. People who are, Walt Whitman's a great example of that, that, you know, for the most part, he was really pretty self-centered in his life until the Civil War happened, and he happened to be a person who brought the wounded into hospitals and took care of people who were losing limbs or were were recovering from... um, from great wounds. If you read his classic collection of poem, Leaves of Grass, you are encounter over and over again this kind of empathy to the world around. An empathy that extends beyond human beings, but even into the whole of creation. The idea that, that we have the, pow- the power to redeem the world around us if we engage ourselves in it. There are also people in all of, the, of all conflicts who have found it. I think I stand in a unique part of American history, mainly because I have known people who have fought in every war of the 20th century, as far as the United States is concerned. World War I, I had new people who fought there, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the first Iraq War. All of those people have, were completely changed by the experiences that they were on. What was interesting to me is they were, their views, for the most part, 
were expanded to believe that the whole world was part of their human company, brothers and sisters abroad. I remember Richard Jones, who fought in the First World War, who came, who came back from that gassed with mustard gas, and so his health was, co was compromised his whole life long, worked for Standard Oil in Long Beach and lived in Whittier, had one son who was also named Richard Jones, and he taught his son that the world was bigger than just little Whittier at the time, and that everybody deserved to be cared for, and that everybody's voice needed to be heard. His son picked up that and spent his whole life basically helping others, volunteering for the, with the police force, working for the gas company, retiring early, and he spent all of his retirement years helping others, working at junior high schools in the LA City School District, helping children who had never seen outside of LA to go places and to experience the world in a bigger, in a bigger way. Richard E. Jones, the second one, was instrumental in my father seeing the outside world too. I think he was my dad's greatest mentor, actually. He was interested in my world, showing me that the world was a greater place to be. People within our own congregation here who are now in God's very company have shown me through time that we are all part of God's great company. The revelations that they had through hard times expanded their universe to see the world in a bigger eye, to see that they were a part of all of God's creation and that God speaks not just to us as Christians, but to the whole world as a whole. We as Christians, though, I think stand in a unique position when we think of Christ in the world. We who, who take in Jesus Christ and claim him as Lord and Savior have, have a unique opportunity to see the world as he did, to give, be given an example that the world is more than just our own concerns and our own desires, but our, the world is a place that can have change in it and change can be made through us. Thousands of people through, and probably millions of people, through their life have heard the call of Christ in their life, have had an experience of Jesus in a, in a significant way, and have made their lives different because of it. Have volunteered in a, a hundred different ways, have marched in marches, given their lives to ideas that were great, and to have changed the world around us. Too often we think of ourselves as being small people, unable to really affect the great trends in history. I think the last couple of weeks have shown us that small people can affect great trends in history. At least this is Mr. Floyd's death has spawned a really a movement around the world in which people are really questioning the way they treat one another in their countries. It's an opportunity for us as Christians, as people of the United States, as people of the world, to reconsider again who we are and who we belong to. If Christ is the one who in all things have come together, if Christ is the one who in which the creation finds its harmony, in which we find our peace and love, we have been given a great example of how the world can be made a better place. We have been given an example of who God is in the world and that theophany, the idea that we can communicate with God and God communicates with us is still real around us and that people can find themselves and be whole, made whole and new and make a difference in the world they live in. Amen. Will you pray with me for a moment? Come near to us, Lord Jesus, that we might see you afresh and new. Show us again the idea that God is with us and that we are, have been befriended by him. We look, God, to be expanded into the world that we are a part of. We look, God, to be small pieces in a great movement to change the world for a better. Empower us, inspire us, give us the capacity to love and the endurance to succeed. Amen.